you might be able to see behind me, but why don't we take a, take a walk up there, Heck Gary? yeah, for sure. By the way, as we walk, let me give congratulations to newlywed Aaron Rowland, who was married uh, just two months ago, him and his now wife, of course, in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania. Yes, uh, yes, thank you, thank you. Shout out to Lexi, happy, uh, happy one month, just over one month. So, uh, Gary, I wanted to just make one quick note here. I was looking at the hat while we were standing down there just now, and I couldn't help but think that this hat looks very much like Sam Elliott's Buford hat in the movie. Yeah, and, you know, and this is the <laughs> real deal. I mean, Sam's, I love Sam Elliott's portrayal, but uh, this is just a beautiful piece. It honestly looks like Gary's hat. Yeah, but well, you know, you see, I have, a, I have a tiny little head, <laughs> yeah. as you see, so I can't rock a Sedgwick. So is it, uh, is it safe to say that uh, Uncle John helped hold the high ground? <laughs> sure, I'll take that for sure. <laughs> so what do we know about the hat, Aaron? So there, there is uh, there is provenance to the uh, the hat. We do know that the hat belonged to uh, to General Sedgwick. In fact, it was donated by uh, Emory Upton when he was a general officer in the regular Army of the United States. So uh, General Upton donated the hat and the the uh, the saddle that he had during that fateful day in uh, in Spotsylvania Courthouse in 1864. Uh, but what we know about the hat is that. It did belong to him. Now, we do know that he's wearing a very similar hat on the monument here in Gettysburg. There is some speculation that this is the hat that he, uh, he was wearing on that fateful day, but unfortunately, there are so many different accounts, and we were just discussing that this morning, uh, about what he was wearing, how he was dressed, and generally what he was doing. So I think, Chris, why don't I turn it over to you to, uh, to give us a little background on that? Yeah, so as Sarah pointed out, you know, he was a very plain dressed general most of the time. Um, you know, he would have a basically a, a private sack coat. He would wear it open. He wouldn't wear a sash or anything. He had uh, his pants with his spurs. He always had riding spurs on and always wore riding boots. But the hats are, are kind of different. Uh, because in writing with his chief of staff, an artist who's trying to design some things here at Gettysburg and get things right, he was very much a perfectionist, this artist, um, he said that, um, that Cedric was wearing a little brown hat, um, just like that, with a ribbon around it. And he said, did he wear it at Gettysburg? He said, I believe he did. He either wore that or a fatigue cap. Perhaps you had better put him in a fatigue cap, uh, which is more of what we think of as a, as a um, sla or not a slouch hat, but a, um, a, a bummer, forge. Oh, okay. a forge bummer. cap. Yeah, yeah. Um, a forge cap. And uh, so this potentially could have been worn by him here. His staff officer, who was writing 20-ish years after, didn't exactly remember what the general had on that day. There were a lot of things going on. There's orders going in and out of headquarters. He would have seen the general, but remember, even if it wasn't on Sedgwick proper, we have baggage trains. Uh, not all of them made them here to Gettysburg, but they would have been with the with the army. In fact, um, Aaron showed us, and I think I have the assets in there, Sarah, if you want to show it. He also had a fantastic camp chair that he, that he brought along. He had a beautiful liquor box um, with all these, which uh, very ornately painted uh, um, bottles. You know, so these things, if they weren't with General Sedgwick proper, um, they would have been within the vicinity of Gettysburg, I think is the fair fair way to say it. I think it's a really good point. And when we think about, you know, how does a, a plainly dressed general would have, well, if you just got 36 miles and drove your men here, I don't know that you're wearing your sash, your sword, and your favorite hat. Uh, I think you're kind of worn out, you're sweating it out, you're all pitted out. And when we take his personality along with the mission that they had been given when they arrive here, I think, uh, you know, the, certainly the setting that we see there is an a very idealized one, but perhaps it is idealized in the same sense as Chris talked us through the death of uh, Sedgwick. You know, when, when Sedgwick, when Ulysses S. Grant is told that Sedgwick has been killed, he asks twice, say that again. And then what he ultimately says is, uh, the death of Sedgwick is worth at least a division of troops. Because while not brilliant, he was dependable. Absolutely. Uh, and so what we see is, I, I am struck by having seen the pictures of his saddle. It's immaculate. It's dependable. The hat, still in great condition. All, all these things speak volumes about someone who will show up and deliver on the day necessary. Maybe not brilliant, but you can always count him on being there. And in that sense, his troops loved him, and the other peers around him seemed to also count on him. 
Yeah, and I, I would just tip in, you know, there's something to be said for morale with a leader. Um, you know, here with Barksdale's charge going across, that is a call to personality with those Mississippians coming across that field. With the Sixth Corps, it was very much that call to personality. In fact, the, the man who was supposed to take over the Sixth Corps actually turned it down initially and because he didn't want to take it over, and it goes to Horatio Wright. It goes back to what a sergeant said about Ike before D-Day. He said his smile's worth 20 divisions. There you go. And with Sedgwick, I think just his name alone was worth that. He joked with his men. He endured the hardships with them. So maybe he wasn't, believe me, he didn't think outside the box. But if you gave him orders, he would do his best to go and carry those orders out to the letter. Um, and do remember, West Point was an engineering school first and foremost. Uh, so engineers think very in a very linear uh linear sense a linear sense um but with sedgwick also as doug pointed out this is our idealized version of what john sedgwick looks like and you can actually pull a fantastic um pamphlet off of archive.org that uh talks about the dedication of this monument we have the saint andrew's cross or the greek cross here um down in the in the rocks that they created here he's flanked by four of those and this is to their beloved commander so this is how they want to remember john sedgwick Aaron, anything else you would like to add? Well, I would just like to add that uh, this really plays into the fact that after the war, there there was a, a significant effort to preserve uh, General Sedgwick's Uncle John's uh, memory, uh, aside from his legacy, that is that uh, that quote. So uh, we, we do have many other items that belong to General Sedgwick, of course, the, the liquor cabinet, his hat. Uh, his uh, his his saddle as well as his sword that came to us through his uh, his daughter later on, so we do have uh, many artifacts and one of my favorite actually it as as small and uh, menial as it might seem but his camp chair, uh, yeah. so you can see the indentation of where General Sedgwick as much of a man in the saddle as he really was and getting out there and having his soldiers taken care of before himself, it is tangible it's a tangible connection to me uh, more so than maybe a hat or a saddle because you can see the physical impression that the man left and not only that we have his lasting legacy at West Point that we we love to uh, we love to honor and we hope it will endure and, and let me just close by saying he was a bachelor all of his life Sedgwick. Um, we lost many of his early mementos and papers in a house fire. He sent everything back to his parents. The house burned down, unfortunately, so we lost a lot of his Mexican-American war papers. He fought at Cherubusco. He fought at Chapultepec. He was breveted for bravery two times. He was out on the plains. He fought in the Seminole Wars. Um, but unfortunately, we lose part of his life. Chris, uh, if I, if I yeah. may, too, uh, I it occurred to me just now that I, I said his daughter, I'm used to talking about daughters, it was his sister, sister that the, uh, his sister that uh, donated his his sword to the army and not his daughter. My uh, my apologies for that mistake. So. No, no problem. We're doing this off the cuff and it was yes, Emily Sedgwick Welsh was his sister. Um, and she keeps uh, his correspondence. And actually she corresponds, one of the reasons we know so much about John Sedgwick is because not only does she correspond with John, she corresponds with his staff officers as well. Um, and that way we have this correspondence two-way street and we're getting a, a glimpse into John Sedgwick from a few different angles. Uh, but John Sedgwick killed in action May 9th, 1864 at the Battle of Spotsylvania Courthouse. He does have a monument here on the Gettysburg Battlefield. It's on Munshower's Knoll, which is just north of, of Little Round Top. And the next hill down is Swisher's Hill. That's where the New Jersey Brigade Monument is, um, which is a really cool monument. So if you ever have a chance, don't just drive past these monuments. Check out Elijah Hunt Roads and that Second Rhode Island, famed from Ken Burns series. Their monuments here. The 10th Massachusetts have a beautiful monument down here. And General Sykes Headquarters uh, Cannon as well as Sedgwick's is here and of course we have Uncle John Sedgwick's monument here at Gettysburg. On behalf of the American Battlefield Trust I want to thank Aaron Rowland and the West Point Museum for bringing these artifacts here to Gettysburg. This is a fantastic behind the scenes opportunity. This is not something we normally get to do so thank you. This is probably the first time this hat has been on the Gettysburg Battlefield or in the Gettysburg vicinity since 1863. We have Doug Dowds, uh, licensed battlefield guide, Gary Edelman, uh, and we also have Sarah Byerly behind the camera. I'm Chris White. I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting battlefield preservation, education. Check everything out at battlefields.org. Click that subscribe button as well as that bell notification.